Hello from the Fiesta Bowl. We are in Scottsdale, Arizona with the Michigan Wolverines this week as they get set to take on TCU in the college football playoff. There have been so many huge moments for this Michigan team this season. They have rolled to 13 and 0. Of course, the biggest point of the season was when they beat Ohio State in the regular season finale, and then they won the Big Ten title game for the second straight season. Now they get set to take on number three TCU here in Scottsdale coming up on Saturday. This team, you know, since you know day one, it's just it's it's really just about going to do my best today. And uh, that's how they've approached each day, going back to winter conditioning, spring ball, training camp, and throughout the season. Uh, so no change. That's uh, that's our goal. Going to going to give it my best today. In some ways, and I've been kind of trying to dial it back down to be more focused and balanced and as a team. And, um, work hard in the off season. Or, um, it's awesome to be out west. This is my first time out west, so uh, being able to come out here and see everything and, and experience, um, yeah, just what a great time it's going to be. And uh, I'm excited. This is somewhere I've never been, so just kind of taking it all in, but staying focused at the same time. It differs in we've been here before. We know that there's a lot of things that could distract us from the task at hand in that this kind of week to prepare, we're taking it much more as a business trip instead of kind of like a vacation feel like it was in Miami last year. So it's uh, the, I'd say the biggest difference is just we've been here before and we know what to do. We welcome challenges, um, whether it's you know mentally or physically, whether you're going against uh, somebody that's going to be a top ten pick in the draft, and you know you know you know you got to bring your bring bring everything you got to replay, or whether it's something that you're going against that you probably haven't faced. Um, at all this year, um, we welcome it, and uh, we, we we love opportunities to show like you know what we're made of, and uh, you know we get one of those on Saturday. feeling great, man. Uh, this month has definitely helped me a lot, and uh, I'm ready to play football again. These guys have been fighting for their lives every week without me and uh, winning without me, and now I've been their biggest cheerleader, but it's time for me to play again. I was just looking at everybody, lacing up their cleats and put on their, putting on their armor and stuff like that, and I was just like, I would give anything to go out there and fight with them, but I couldn't, so I just take on the role again as cheerleader, and uh, I cheered them boys on, but it's been hard. It's been really hard. You can kind of get an idea of how a team's going to perform by how they, how seriously they took the offseason. I've said on multiple occasions that the wins uh, get won in the summer and winter. So if you ain't working hard then, you're going to be losing. You know, so we, we kind of we kind of prepared for that, expected that, um, needed that to happen, and we weren't going to let it go any other way. This year is more business. We know what to expect. Like the core of our team was here last year and knew that feeling after the game and knew that we didn't want that again this year. So we just came in this whole month and had a completely different mindset, I think, and just more about business. Didn't really listen to any outside noise. We were there together and we were there for one purpose. Well, there was that um, that bad taste in my mouth that, you know, we, we uh, really want to get back here so bad. Um, and ever since, ever since that, uh, the time ran out in that game, like I think everybody knew that we wanted to get back here, that we can get back here and, and go even further this year. For Michigan, remember back to the beginning of the season, there was that quarterback competition between J.J. McCarthy and Cade McNamara. Well, McNamara lost that job. He is now off to Iowa. J.J. McCarthy, though, came in and took this job and won it convincingly. 
McCarthy is just a sophomore, but you can see just how wise he is beyond his years. In a time when NIL money is dominating conversations, McCarthy has actually donated over $30,000 to children's charities since last season. That includes charities in Michigan and his hometown of Chicago, plus the local children's hospitals for every single opponent that Michigan has played on the road over the last two years. His mission is about so much more than just football. For me, I just have such an amazing opportunity, and I'm so blessed to be in the position I am in. And uh, just being able to give back and kind of pay, pay forward to the next generation, be able to show them uh, just someone making a positive change in this world is my kind of internal drive and be able to make this world a better place at the end of the day. All right, I've got Isaiah Hole from the Tegna Locked On Wolverines podcast with me uh, as we sit here in Scottsdale, Arizona. It is a stunning property here at Camelback. Uh, it's incredible. This whole week um, certainly has a big time feel for Michigan. Um, and it, it's been a good week so far. And I think all the Michigan players, though, they feel very, excuse me for saying it, but they feel locked in uh, <laughs> as, as from everything they've said so far. Oh, absolutely. This is this is a business trip. This isn't a situation where they have a bunch of activities that they're partaking in. Uh, I know they went to dinner at Fogo de Chao yesterday. I think that's about the extent of the type of yes. thing that they are doing this week. They're not uh, they're not going to the beach. Obviously, there's no beaches around here. Yeah. There there's not a bunch of different distractions that they've had in the past, and that was an important thing for them. I think uh, last year they said that the, the moment in the moment it felt like okay, we're locked in, we're we're ready to go, but then they found themselves really just kind of reveling in the things that Miami had to offer. Yeah. And things are a little bit different now. They, they understand kind of what it takes having gone through it once. And they are not just happy to be here now. They didn't think that that's what their mentality was last year, but having been there for the first time, not having expected to be there, uh, I think things have changed a bit. So now at this moment, they definitely feel like they know what it takes to, to make it to that next step. This has been a goal of theirs since the beginning of the, you know, before the season started, it was one of their four goals. And it's the only one really left to get to and win the national championship. And they're doing everything they can in order to be able to do that. And I think, it, I find it so fascinating that, that it feels like every single guy that we have talked to the last two days has basically echoed that exact sentiment. Like they, they've all said like, yeah, last year, you know, you had Miami, last year you had the beach. We were so excited to be there. And there is something to that. When you beat Ohio State for the first time in forever, when you win a Big Ten championship for the first time in forever, like, yeah, there is something to be said about just being excited to be there. I don't know. I think it's human nature almost. I don't think you can fault them for the way they felt last year, having never gone through it. But there is certainly something to being here for a second time, it feels like, that will be helpful at least. Oh, absolutely. And I, I think that it is a it is a thing where with that Ohio State game, for instance, and I know with the fan base, it was something similar in the sense of going to the college football playoff. It was kind of like everything that they have at this point is house money. Everything's yeah. gravy, yeah. and now it you know the, the going out and beating Ohio State on the road in Columbus that was something that was expected. Uh, may, maybe not expected in Columbus, but it was certainly <laughs> expected in Ann Arbor. Uh, I remember talking to some players uh, during the spring game. Uh, one player, uh, actually, Brad Robbins, the, the punter, pulled me aside and said, this is what we want to do, this is what we intend on doing, and this is what we think is going to happen. And they've done it. And I think that it's a little bit different when, like you said, you don't know exactly what's going to happen. You, you have a hope. But then once you actually turn that hope into actual reality, that changes things significantly. So now they, they have their eyes set on more because they know that they're capable of more. And I think what the thing will be interesting is to see if TCU, they haven't been here before. Yeah. They say that, you know, hey, we're locked in, we come here, we want to win the game. It, it, again, it's, it's this, a difference between knowing how to handle the expectations versus hoping. Yeah, you're around this team so often, and you are up in Ann Arbor. Can you think back to a couple years ago, after the COVID year, there were a lot of people that wanted Jim Harbaugh fired. I fully admit, <laughs> I was one that was very hard on Jim Harbaugh, and I think there were a lot of Michigan fans that were in that same exact camp, and I, I think rightfully so after that season. But he has turned things around, and I have admitted 15,000 ways that I was wrong. Um, and I think that's important for people to do, by the way. Um, but how, how bad was it two years ago, and how did he get this thing back to this spot in your mind? Well, it, it was pretty bad. I mean, it, it, was, it was difficult to envision any kind of circumstance in which 
suddenly could turn things around. I mean, and if Michigan hadn't had the oddly fortunate timing of getting the whole team basically getting COVID, I mean, Jim Harbaugh was trying to put a scout team out there yeah. to play Ohio State. I know, I know a lot of people think that they were <laughs> I don't know how this is going to play in Ohio, by no. the way, but go ahead. Go ahead. But, I mean, they, <laughs> I, I knew very well that they, Jim Harbaugh was trying to play that game, and he was about to have Dan Villari as the starting quarterback. It was going to be a bunch of guys that don't even have their names on the back of their jerseys at practice. You know, that, those types of guys were going to be playing against one of the best Ohio State teams. Things would have certainly not worked yeah. you know he would have been gone at that point because yeah. i think the ryan day hang 100 comment yeah. would have come to fruition <laughs> against that team uh how he's turned it around it, it i think it was just more of kind of how he started the season with the idea of like this is the offense that we need to run it needs to be more akin to the types of things i ran at stanford the san francisco 49ers uh but then just getting a complete team buy-in and i think it started with the player-led leadership you know guys like aiden hutchinson and josh ross that said this is unacceptable. I think that's where it really started. It had less to do with the head coach as much as the players saying, like, we cannot do what we just did. And then getting a quarterback that, was, uh, that wasn't all about himself in a, in a certain way. No offense yes. to Joe Milton, but he, it, it, Cade McNamara was a quintessential team guy. Yeah. And for them to be able to just kind of all coalesce, become kind of a hive mind. You know, you talk yeah. about the idea of every player that you talk to is saying the same thing. That is kind of what this team is. It's they're all pulling in the same direction. They're not factional. And we've seen some of these Michigan teams, including that one being factional and then getting the right coaches in place that again, they, they weren't worried about moving up the ladder as much as they were just being really good at their job. And I think that was kind of the start, but it was bad. I mean, at the moment, I mean, Jim Harbaugh was taking a pay cut. Uh, people were looking at the situation as he's a dead man walking. Uh, how on earth is he going to beat Ohio State? You know, he, he was 0 for 6. And then suddenly everyone pulling in the same direction, really having that quintessential team, that changed things. And the player-led leadership is what really kind of started that. Him being able to rely on, on his team captains, there was accountability that didn't exist beforehand. And uh, it started with that and the energy. You know, we heard that throughout. Energy, energy, energy throughout spring practice. It carried into the season getting to, to beat a team like Washington, which maybe wasn't as good, but people thought in the preseason that Washington was going to be a formidable mm -hmm. team. And they, they went from there, and that was kind of the first step of, okay, we, we can do it. And then going to Wisconsin and beating them in Madison for the first time in 20 years, coming back and beating Nebraska. Uh, and then even with the loss to Michigan State, this was something we heard this week, was uh, that we came together as a team and we recognized – we can either let this beat us and take us down the same path we've gone down just about every year, or we can let it fuel us to that next step. And they did that. And then now this year, they, you know, they went into the year knowing we can beat Ohio State. We can win the Big Ten. We can make it to the college yeah. football playoff. Now we just need to figure out how to get more out of it. And I think the switch to J.J. McCarthy, uh, that really elevated the team. Because now you look at, you know, this game, potential future opponents in either Georgia or Ohio State, and you say there's an X factor that they didn't have a quarterback that still has those same team leadership qualities. Yeah. I think that's certainly an interesting point. I think I have an idea how this football game is going to go against TCU here on Saturday. Um, in your mind, how do you think this game is going to play out if you had to make a prediction? I, I think, honestly, it's... It's one where, after listening weirdly to the, the defensive people today and, and Jesse Minter and everything, I got more cautious than I have been, but I'm going to take myself back out of that <laughs> uh, just because when you hear, hear them raving and, you know, then you hear Quentin Johnson say, Johnston say, you know, nothing's really standing out about the Michigan secondary, <laughs> uh, that, that will certainly raise some alarms. But I, I think that when I look at this, uh, this offense that, TCU has Michigan's defense is built to stop offenses like this yeah. right uh, it will be a little bit more of a challenge because of Max Duggan's legs uh, but as much as we talk about the TCU offense versus the Michigan defense I think the the other side of the ball is what makes things interesting uh, because I, I cannot envision TCU being able to really stop Michigan's offense I think that's an understated matchup because people 
are thinking, okay, you know, the big thing is TCU's got this high flying offense. Michigan has stopped offenses that has particularly the Ohio State mm -hmm. that are more high flying that have just as electric, if not more electric playmakers. Yeah. Uh, and th they were able to stop the, you know, stall the run, uh, didn't stop it as much until the second yeah. half. Uh, they were able to limit Marvin Harrison Jr., CJ Stroud enough, kept them out of the end zone. TCU's red zone uh, capabilities is not great. Uh, that feeds right into Michigan's hands. They, they are, I think, in the 80th, or hovering around 80th in the, in the country in red zone conversions. And uh, they, they feel like we can make them work for it. We can do all the same types of things. And then on the other end, I mean, Donovan Edwards, uh, J.J. McCarthy, Colston Loveland, all the kind of guys that have stepped up uh, to this point, I just think they're going to be too much for TCU to handle. I think Michigan ends up winning this one relatively comfortably. I'm in the same boat, and I hate when I feel that confident going into a game one way or the other because generally there's something I'm – maybe there's something I'm missing. I'm with you. I just don't see – how this Michigan team that has been so determined loses this game. Um, before I get you out of here, tell people how they can uh, read your stuff, see all your stuff, and uh, get all your content. Uh, you can listen to me uh, or watch me, Locked on Wolverines. You can find it wherever you get your podcast, or we have it on video at uh, YouTube. Uh, Wolverines Wire through USA Today Sports Media Group. That's, uh, that's, that's the main thing uh, for me. Uh, that's where uh, you can find all the written content. All right, awesome. Thanks so much. Yeah, Enjoy absolutely. the game coming up here on Saturday.